Welcome to this video in which we will use two-dimensional static analysis of particles to uh, determine the tension in some cables and ultimately the load on one of the supports you see in the picture. The idea here is that we have a uh, very heavy weight that is suspended um, 80 feet in the air. Uh, I tried to come up with a reasonable story of uh, why we would want to do this. And I was thinking maybe elephants uh, flying on trapezes or something like that, but it seemed kind of dumb. So just think of it, uh, for those of you that like something like that, think of uh, very heavy animals flying around. For the rest of you, uh, think of like loads of cement or something. So anyway, our goal, our ultimate goal, is to find the load exerted by the weight on the one side and the cable bracing the uh, support on the other side, we want to find the weight or the, the load on this support. And to do that, uh, we'll actually do two analyses uh, with two different particles. Um, so before we get started, I would like to try to solve this in two different ways. The first is using pretty much um, straightforward geometry using trigonometry relationships to find um, x and y components of forces and then solving um, for uh, values, tensions, and stuff from the, from the um, equations that we'll get. The other is to represent uh, things in terms of vectors and hopefully show you that uh, it has some advantages in the sense that you spend a lot less time finding cosines and sines. It has a disadvantage in the sense that it's somewhat harder to see, at least until you've had some uh, understanding of vectors or you've worked with them for a while so that they make sense. So again, the first approach will be um, pretty much geometric. We'll uh, draw triangles and find angles and stuff like that in order to find uh, x and y components of forces. OK, so our ultimate goal is to find the, um, let's see, what's a good color for this? We want to find the load placed on the support. In other words, what force does the support have to push up with in order to um, uh, keep everything where it is. We'll be doing statics, which means that uh, nothing's moving. Uh, and we will be doing particle statics, which means that we don't have to take into account that uh, moments or net moments are equal to zero. So this will actually be a fairly simple process, or at least problem. OK, so let's go ahead and start. The first thing we need to do is uh, identify our body of interest. And we'll start by looking at this ring that suspends, or, or that the cables are hooked to to suspend the weight. And we will treat this ring as a particle. We'll assume that relative to the size of the cables and such that it's small, so we don't have to worry about it rotating. And of course, the first thing we want to do then is create a free body diagram of the ring. So let's do that. OK, so we have the ring, which again, we're going to represent as a particle. OK, if we go back to our picture, uh, we have the weight of the four tons hanging from the ring. So that's going to exert a force downward. Okay, so we'll draw that force, and uh, we'll convert from tons to pounds. So this will be, will be a downward force of 8,000 pounds. And then we have two cables that are pulling upwards and to the right and upwards to the left. So we'll go put these into our diagram. The cable on the right will exert a force upwards and to the right. And the cable on the left will exert a force upwards and to the left. 
and let's call the magnitude of these forces T1 for tension in cable 1 and T2 for the tension in cable 2. Okay. Now, because these forces are applied by cables, we know that the force will be in the direction of the cable. And we have dimensional information that will allow us to determine the directions in which these cables, are, well, the, the directions of the cables from the ring. So if we go back, we see that the cable on the right goes horizontally 20 feet and vertically 20 feet. So this means that the cable on the right has the geometry that looks like this. It goes horizontally 20 feet, then vertically 20 feet. And this is the actual length of the cable. So this is 20 feet, 20 feet. OK. Um, this is uh, an isosceles right triangle. Hopefully, it should be clear to you that the angle, whoops, that that's a mistake. Oh, dear, what on earth have we done there? Sorry. This is 45 degrees. So we know that this angle here, which I haven't drawn very well, is 45 degrees. OK. If we go back to our geometry, uh, we see that uh, the cable on the left goes over 30 feet and up 20 feet. So we can represent it by a triangle that looks like this, over 30 feet, up 20 feet. So this is 30 feet and 20 feet. And so we want to find the angle here. Uh, the angle here is going to be the inverse tangent of 20 over 30. Um, again, that's a simple trigonometry relationship. So if I compute that inverse um, tangent relationship, I find that uh, to the nearest tenth of a degree, this is 33.7 degrees. You can do this with your calculator or an online computing service or something like that. So what that means is this is 33.7 degrees and this is 33.7 degrees. Okay. Now, so that basically takes care of our geometry. Um, our goal is to find the magnitudes of the tension in cable 1 and the tension in cable 2. And to do that, we need to find the x and y components of the tension in cable 1 and the tension in cable 2. So let's see, uh, let's say red is a good color for components here. So the x component of this tension, T1, is going to look like this. The y component is going to look like this. The x component, this guy here, is going to be T1, that's the magnitude of this vector, times the cosine of 33.7 degrees. OK, again, um, that's a simple trig relationship. I have a right triangle here. The hypotenuse has length T1, so the adjacent side is going to have length T1 cosine 33.7. And similarly, uh, the vertical component is going to have T or magnitude T1 sine 33.7 degrees. Okay. Similarly, if I look at the horizontal and the vertical component of T2, I will have, um, oh, and I should be very careful here. This is going to be a negative sign because my vector is pointing um, to the left. Okay, so when I go to, well, actually I don't need to do it that way. Let's not do it that way. At the risk of, hopefully this will unconfuse you, uh, doing it the way I was going to might have confused you. 
Okay, so let's call this T2 and it's cosine 45 degrees for the horizontal component. And this will be T2 sine 45 degrees. Okay, so basically we've used geometry to break T our, our forces, uh, T1 and T2, into their X and Y components. Now because we have static equilibrium, we can say that, generically speaking, the summation of the forces in the X direction is zero, and the summation of the forces in the Y direction is zero. Here, let's actually do that in a different color because it'll look so much nicer. Okay, uh, the summation, the forces in the Y direction are equal to zero. Okay, in the X direction then, we have this guy here, and since the arrow is pointed to the left, this is going to be a minus T1 cosine 33.7 degrees. We'll then have also this guy, which is T2 cosine 45 degrees. And because these forces in the x direction sum to zero, we set that equal to zero. Okay, in the vertical direction, we'll have this guy here, T1 sine 33.7 degrees. Over here, we'll have plus T2 sine 45 degrees. And now we have to take into account also we have this 8,000 pound force going downward, so this is minus 8,000 pounds, and that's equal to zero. Okay, so what we need to do now is solve these two simultaneous equations. The equation that we got by setting the forces, or the sum of the forces in the x direction equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero. We have to solve these two simultaneous equations. And at this point, I'm going to skip um, any detailed explanation of how we do this. What I'll do is, um, if there's enough interest, uh, actually what I'll probably do in any case, is have a part of this video uh, that comes after everything else in which we actually solve these in the most painfully detailed way possible. Uh, what I will do now is uh, just use Wolfram Alpha to do this directly. So I'll call T1 A, so I have minus A, cosine 33.7 degrees plus B, that'll be my T2, cosine 45 degrees is equal to zero. Um, then we have A sine 33.7 degrees plus B sine 45 degrees minus 8,000 is equal to zero. We hit return. It computes for a while. And it gives us a solution down here that says that A is uh, uh, to the closest um, uh, digit 5769 and B is 6787. So we'll go back to our picture. Okay, and this tells us then that T1 was uh, 5769 pounds and T2 was 6787 pounds. Okay, so we've completed basically half the problem. We've looked at the ring that the weight was suspended from and found the tension in the two ropes that the weight or that were suspending the weight. And I'm out of time. 
So in the next part of the video, we'll go and look at the load on the support.